So good morning, good evening, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming back for day two. I hope you enjoyed the first day session. And today we do have Kim with us here from More Care. So she's gonna to talk to us about your health plan and walk you through sort of some of the basics of what that looks like. So Kim, over to you. Awesome, thank you so much. Hi everybody. Um, as I was just said, my name is Kim. I am from More Care and I'm here to talk to you all about your health insurance today. Um, you know, I'm gonna just start by saying that I don't expect you to memorize everything that I go over for the next you know, 20 minutes, half hour of chatting. Um, it will be a lot of information and it will be going kind of fast. And the reason for this is because I wanna make sure we cover as much information as possible. And I also wanna leave time for questions at the end. Um, but if you're gonna leave with anything today, please just know that you have access to help both on campus and off. Um, so if you're gonna leave with anything, Let's remember morecare.ca and uh, you know pretty much everything from there can be found out later. But I'm gonna get started. I will ask for everyone to please hold their questions until the end. 99 times out of 100, I do already answer those questions in the presentation. So if you can please hold your questions until the end, then I can go through the questions afterwards and make sure that anything that was not answered in the um, you know, webinar is uh, also it is being recorded. So if for whatever reason you have to leave, or if you think a friend might benefit from this session, then it is being recorded. Or if you just want to, you know, watch again, it is available for you. So let's get started. I'm going to just share my screen. I don't have a formal presentation because I prefer going through the website with you. This way you'll know exactly where you're going when you do actually need to go on to morecare.ca. And this is kind of what you're gonna see. So we're all starting at Fanshawe College. So we're gonna click on Fanshawe College and it will bring us here. Now I do want to mention that I am gonna be speaking to everyone as if you are starting on September 1st, 2023. If you are not starting on September 1st, 2023, you would be in a different policy year. The plan doesn't change. Um, but I just want everybody to know if you are on this call and you're a current student, I am speaking as though you are all starting September 2023. Okay. All right. So this is the website. I know there's lots of different things, lots of colors and information. So I'm going to kind of walk you through really quickly. I'm going to start right away with your coverage. Now, before I get into the coverage details, I do want to make sure I specify a few things. First and foremost, this is a mandatory plan. You are automatically enrolled in your tuition payments, which means there's no additional payment required. You are automatically enrolled by Fanshawe. So all you need to do is pay your tuition and then you are automatically on this health plan. The health plan will run from September 1st, 2023 until August 31st, 2024. So that all of the maximums that I'll be talking about, all of the timelines, it is based on per policy year. For those of you starting September 1st, 2023, your coverage will go until August 31st, 2024. If you do continue to be a student into the next school year, then again, that would be a new policy year, which we would continue. So let's get going. So OHIP alternative. For those of you who may not know, OHIP stands for Ontario Health Insurance Plan. It is the plan that all Ontario you know, um, residents are on provincially. Of course, as a new student at Fanshawe and in, in Ontario, you do not have access to OHIP just yet, which is why we have worked with Fanshawe International to create an OHIP alternative for you. It is very, very, very similar, pretty much identical to the OHIP that is available to Ontario residents. So this is your primary coverage, which means that it is for your hospital visits, doctor visits, blood tests, lab work, all that kind of stuff. So while I can't say that something is more important than another, I feel confident in saying your primary insurance is the most important aspect because it is for your day-to-day -day health. So if we scroll down here, you're gonna see that there is a million dollar lifetime benefit maximum. What that means is you have up to a million dollars to use to go to the doctor while you're a student at Fanshawe. Um, so treatment or of illness or surgery or injury at a physician or doctor's office, there is hospital coverage, as I mentioned, medical services and devices are within this coverage as well. Now at the bottom here, I do wanna make sure I highlight the different maximums within this coverage. <clears throat> okay, so there's a $25,000 maximum for maternity coverage. So if you were to get pregnant while you are a student at Fanshawe College, 
then you would have $25,000 per, um, you know, pre and postnatal care. There's a $25,000 psychiatric coverage. Um, I do see some chats coming in. If you wouldn't mind just holding your questions until the end, I promise most of the time I do answer it. So please just hold your questions. Otherwise we're gonna have 200 questions to ask at the end and I won't have anything to, I won't be able to get to all of them. So if you could just hold your chats, that'd be awesome. Hi, Kim. Sorry, the yeah. the questions are, um, I think some of them aren't able to see the screen, so they're just asking each other. They aren't oh, working. Okay. I just, I've done a lot of webinars and in the past, <laughs> people start talking to each other and then I miss a lot of questions and people get, that. that's why. So I just saw the chats piling up. You can do personal chats too, just, just an FYI. Um, this is a personal request. I just do get distracted by the chats popping up in all honesty, that, that's, that's where we are. Um, okay, so let's continue. So there's this $25,000 psychiatric hospitalization, um, $10,000 maximum for self-inflicted injuries, uh, $25,000 maximum for oncology treatment. And then there's $10,000 for both repatriation and return home. I do want to make sure that this is fully understood what return home means. That were to mean if you were to get so severely ill that the doctor says that the only option is for you to return to your home country, that is what <clears throat> that $10,000 is for. So we at More Care would worth work with our case management team to ensure that you safely are returned home. All right, awesome. So let's continue on. Now, I do want to mention that the OHIP alternative, you would be using your More Care card, which I will show you how to download shortly. You would bring that to the hospital or the doctor's office. Sometimes you might have to pay out of pocket. Sometimes you won't. But if you do want to set up direct billing and you definitely don't want to pay out of pocket, we can help you with that. And I will show you that shortly as well. Let's continue going through the coverage. Uh, so prescription drugs. So you do have, <clears throat> excuse me, coverage for drug coverage, which is anything prescribed by a doctor. Now, this is anything that is prescribed in Canada. So it's important to remember, <clears throat> excuse me, that if you do have any, <clears throat> sorry, any prescriptions in your home country, that you would need to come to Canada and get an Ontario doctor to provide you with an Ontario equivalent. You could just let them know, hey, this is what I'm on in my home country, and they'll be able to prescribe you something from here. <clears throat> so you do have a $5,000 maximum uh, for reimbursement of drugs uh, per policy year, up to 80%. Uh, so that means, you know, if your drug coverage was, or sorry, if your drugs were $100, the insurance would cover 80%, which is $80, and you would have to cover the rest, which is 20. Um, there's $150 for vaccines and immunizations, as well as $200 for contraceptives, which is birth control. Um, again, this is everything that is prescribed by a doctor, which means any over-the-counter drugs, such as, you know, any Tylenol, Advil, that kind of aches and pains type, type over-the-counter drugs would not be covered. Um, but you will be able to get direct billing with your more care card. You just need to bring it to the pharmacy and they would put it through for you right there. Dental coverage. So you have $750 to go see the dentist for your teeth. Um, you have 80% reimbursement for majority of your services. So basic and periodontic, which is your you know, general exams, simple extractions, fillings, stuff like that. And then the preventative services also at 80%. So that's cleaning, scaling, that kind of fun stuff. Um, there's also 50% coverage for major and endodontic services. Now, what I do like to always mention and, and quite honestly um, recommend is for when you do go to the dentist, you can ask them for a quote. So you know exactly how much you will be owing out of pocket. Just remember dentists are a business. Um, so it's good to know what you will be having to pay out of pocket. Uh, because even though you do have $750 of coverage, there are maximums within that up to 80% reimbursement. Uh, so again, please just keep that in mind um, and you will be able to have direct billing at pretty much any dental office as well with your more care card. All right, let's move on extended health. Uh, so the following, they're all covered at 100% reimbursement. So various various paramedical practitioners, you'll see that there are various maximums for combined, some per. So this would be great for you to take some time on your own, see what you have covered. But you'll see that you have a $500 maximum benefit per practitioner for acupuncturists, chiropractors, nutritionists, osteopaths. So many things on that first list there. There's a $500 combined maximum for an RMT, which is a massage therapist and orthotherapy. There's a $500 combined maximum for physiotherapy and physical rehabilitation therapists. And there is also a $1,000 combined maximum 
for psychologists, psycho social workers, and psychoanalysts. Um, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see lots of different coverages. Um, I'd like to just make sure everybody understands the emergency taxi means if you were need to need to get to a hospital in an emergency, well, that's hard to say quickly, in an emergency, you would have $50 if you are unable to get into an ambulance. It's not, oh, I have $50 if I'm late for an exam. No, it has everything to do with your health and getting yourself to a hospital. Um, there's accidental dental coverage for $2,000 maximum. So that would be, of course, if you were to be in an accident, you know, maybe slipped and fell and banged your mouth and then your teeth have, have some type of damage, that would fall under accidental dental in addition to your dental coverage. Last thing I do wanna mention, actually two last things, is diabetic supplies. So if you were to, if you do have diabetes and you need to uh, claim your diabetic supplies, just make sure that you're putting in the correct um, type of DIN, which is drug identification number. If there's ever any issues, you can reach out to us, but you should be good to go. And ambulance, you do have $100 per student year um, for an ambulance coverage. Fun fact, the average ambulance price is roughly 250 to $300. So of course, if it's an emergency, that is money well spent and you need it. Um, but if you don't need an ambulance, uh, I would recommend you don't take it. You're gonna also see that you do have vision coverage. So you are able to go get an eye exam that is $80 every 24 months for an eye exam and $150 for the eyeglasses. So this is the only different um, coverage timeline than the rest of the plan. This is every two years. So if you were to go right on September 1st, when your coverage starts to go get your eyes checked on September 1st, 2023, you would not be eligible for your vision coverage under the More Care Fanshawe plan until September 1st, 2025. All of these benefits you do typically need to pay out of pocket and then submit your claim for reimbursement. Moving on, we do have accident benefits. Not the most fun to talk about, but a very important aspect of your coverage. So you do have a million dollar for any one accident that is available to you. There's life insurance included in this, um, you know, bereavement, education benefits. So I really hope no one ever has to use it. But if you do get into an accident, make sure you do check the accident box so that you are able to claim what is rightfully yours. Travel coverage. So luckily, travel seems to be becoming more of the norm again, which is great. So you do have a wonderful travel option, which is a $5 million lifetime benefit maximum for trips of up to 180 days. So if you're going for trips longer than 180 days, I'm very jealous, um, but you will have to purchase additional coverage for those trips. Um, but any trips within 180 days, you have coverage outside of Ontario and your home country. So the only two places in the whole world that this travel coverage does not work is within Ontario and your home country. If you do find yourself in a hospital outside of Ontario or the country, please make sure that you call the number on your more care card or it's right here. And then the um, insurance company will be able to speak directly with the hospital to ensure that your payments get made. Keep scrolling along. We do have a wonderful student assistance program called My Wellness available for you. Um, this is kind of a 24 seven access to uh, you know, therapy for you. Um, you would use your therapy coverage within this, um, but there is a great mental health assessment available and uh, you know a wonderful, wonderful website which you can use. And I will briefly show you that in just one second. Last but not least, I do wanna make sure I touch on the early arrival coverage. So obviously none of you are covered currently if you are starting September 1st, um, but if you are starting September 1st, 2023, you do have early arrival coverage that will be available to you. 30 days prior to your coverage start date. So that would be August 2nd. Um, and what you would have available is the OHIP alternative piece. So your primary coverage. Um, so you would have to pay out of pocket in order to access the coverage and then submit for reimbursement once your coverage is in place in September, but you are covered under the early arrival clause 30 days prior. So we can give you some time to move into your new place and get settled before school starts. All right, I know I just went through lots of information. So that's everything you're covered for. Now I'm just being mindful of time. I am going to be going pretty quickly because I wanna make sure that we have time for questions. So do remember this is all available for you on the website and you can definitely take your time to go through this afterwards as well. So we did go through the coverage. Now, how do you actually submit claims? So you're gonna see in the forms in the Your Space section, forum section, a little instructions manual on how to submit your claims. It's actually very useful all the guidelines on how to complete your claim form 
very in depth. So that is there for you. You go back here, sorry, just gotta move this. Then you will also see the 2022-23 International Health Care Claim Form that will obviously change with the dates come September 1st, but it's gonna be the exact same form. You're gonna fill out the form with all your information. It's all fillable. Um, you would put in your certificate ID, which is your student number, all of your information of wherever you need your check sent if you're seeking a check. You're then gonna put what your claim is about, um, total amount paid. Also, if you do have dependents that you're gonna opt in, which I will show you how to do shortly, they would also need to put their information here. Keep scrolling down. You're gonna see, is your claim related to pregnancy? Just say yes or no. Is your claim the result of an accident? Yes or no. And finally, is your claim related to any uh, of the following, which is uh, school reasons. So if you keep scrolling down, the second page in an our ideal world would be with you when you were with the doctor, but let's get real, it's probably not gonna happen. So don't worry, you don't have to go back to the doctor's office. You will just have to um, submit the claim with all the information that you can. And if the claims department needs more information, then they'll be able to get it when they need. What you will need to do at the bottom is confirm if you, the payment needs to be made to you, the student, which means you paid out of pocket, or it needs to be made to the hospital, which means that they gave you an invoice. Either way, you do need to include either your invoice or receipt. And then if it is to be made to you, the payment, please specify if you would like a check mailed to you or electronic fund transfer, um, which means directly into your bank account. If you do want it into your bank account, you just fill out your bank information here, sign your name at the bottom, and off you go. You'll submit it to claims at morecare.ca. Typically, it takes roughly three weeks for you to receive a response um, for OHIP alternative type claims, simply because they do take a little bit more adjudication. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, so we're scrolling down. You're going to see your student medical card. Now, no one on this call, if you are starting on September 1st, will be able to access this Morecare card until September. I want that to be very clear because I know oftentimes people will ask me in the chat, why can't I access my card? You do not have coverage yet. Your coverage does not start till September 1st. So come September, you'll be able to download your card. But as of right now, you will not be able to. But once you do, all you need to do is put your date of birth and your student number, and it'll generate directly for you online. You'll then be able to print it out. We do not send you a physical copy, but I do recommend printing it out. I also recommend downloading our app and then you'll be able to save it right into your Apple wallet as well, or whatever other type of phone you have. Keep scrolling down, you're gonna see our discount network. This is just for some additional discounts. If you like to save a little bit of extra money in addition to your coverage, by all means, take a look. I like to save money, so I always recommend taking a look at the discount network. And then we also have the provider map. These are the clinics and hospitals that are uh, have direct billing with more care. It's not to say that you can't go to any other doctor or hospital in Ontario, but these you will definitely be able to just give your more care card and not have to pay it of pocket. Keep scrolling down, you're going to see some coupons available to you. So some coupons at Rexall, Shoppers Drug Mart. Then there's a frequently asked questions section and finally a feedback form. Now on this form, you're going to see a couple things. You're going to see our website, help at morecare.ca. You're going to see our phone number as well. And you're also going to notice there's a chat at the bottom of the screen too. That is our contact center. Our contact center is open every day from 8 a.m. to midnight, and that is available to you. Um, so you can email us, you can call us, you can live chat, and people will be able to help you with any questions you might have. I do actually want to mention too, if you do have any personal questions, um, because this is a public forum, I do recommend not asking any personal questions in the public chat. Please do go head over to the live chat or our phone number or email, and one of our uh, customer service representatives will be able to help you with any personal inquiries. Another really great piece of information that I'm very excited about for Fanshawe International is that come September, you're actually going to have a benefit plan office that is available for international students. I unfortunately don't have extreme details right now because we're still finalizing the location on campus, but there will actually be a more care representative that works on campus every single day to help you with any of your needs. So once that information is available, the international office will of course be well equipped with that. And then we will be able to provide you information of where you can find that individual on campus. So that is a coming soon. It is not available just yet, but it's something that is coming soon and we're very excited about. 
All right, so we've been through all of your coverage information. We've been through how you submit your claims. Let's go back to the beginning and just make sure that we cover all of our bases before we get into the questions. Um, so one additional thing on submitting your claims is that you are able to submit your drugs, dental, vision, and health claims on eProfile, which pretty much means anything except for your OHIP alternative accident and travel. So you can create an eProfile with Claim Secure here. Um, you'll just have to create a profile one time, then you can submit your claims directly on that eProfile, and you'll be able to get your reimbursement back in roughly three to five business days. Now, if you are looking to opt in your family come September, you will be able to. This is not open for September start students, so please do not opt in your family now. You will be able to opt in your family in September. So on September 1st, that option will be open. You will simply click it and the, the price is subject to change. So please do not look at this price. This is for the current policy year, um, but you will simply need to go through all of the different, um, you know, pieces of information that are asked, submit your payment, and then your family will be opted in. You will have from your starting date until the end of that month to opt in your family. So you'll have from September 1st to the end of the month of September. Um, also, if you do have OHIP, that is what the opt-out means. Um, you're, this is a mandatory plan, but if you do have a provincial coverage from Ontario, then that option is there for you as well. Um, as I said, there was a My Wellness tab, which is the student assistance program available to you. So this is a wonderful mental health resource that is available. Take a look through here. You might not need it today, but it is good to know should you need some help tomorrow. And last, but certainly not least, we have virtual doctors option. Um, I highly recommend using this option for your first step. Um, you know, I know that the Canadian healthcare system is most likely different from that and your home countries. Uh, so here with the um, virtual doctor's option, you'll be able to speak with a doctor immediately within minutes, right from your computer or your phone. All you'll need is to be in a quiet private area. So please, 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 I urge you to speak with a virtual doctor first so you know where to go because you don't go to the hospital here in Canada just for a common cold that you would go to a doctor or walk-in clinic. So rather than wasting your time, you know, in a hospital waiting room, talk to a doctor on here first and they can let you know the best next steps. All right, lots of information I just shared. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I do apologize if uh, people were having issues and seeing that screen. I do see lots of, uh, lots of things here. Um, I would prefer if we could do the questions in the chat. There is 200 of you um, and I just think the chat will be a little bit easier for us to, to kind of get through rather than, you know, 50 people put their hands up. So if you could please put your questions in the chat and I'll, I'll take a look in, in this chat, um, you know, for any questions that you might have. Um, so someone asked about login credentials and when do we need to fill this by? Um, as If that is relating to the more care coverage, you do not have login credentials. You don't need login credentials. As I said, you're automatically enrolled in this plan. And that is something Fanshawe does on your behalf. So you don't need to log in. What you will need to log in for is if you wanna submit claims on eProfile, but to actually be covered by the plan, you, you don't actually have to technically do anything, which is, which is great. It's made very easy for you. Um, someone said, can you elaborate more on pre-existing conditions, um, specifically with claiming insurance benefits and number of days, 120 days? Sure, absolutely. I know pre-existing conditions sometimes causes concern and confusion for a lot of students, which is why I don't talk about it too much in these webinars, because I do often think it is more case by case for each individual student. What pre-existing means though, is if you were to have a condition at home, um, pre-existing, and you come to Fanshawe, that condition must be stable for 120 days prior to coming to Fanshawe to, to be covered under the plan. Um, so let's say, for example, you have, let's say, seizures on a regular basis. As long as they have been stable for 120 days, let's say you're on medication and they've been stable, you have not been hospitalized, there's been no issues, then that would be fine. But if you were hospitalized for something, you know, the week before you left to come to Fanshawe, that particular ailment would not be covered under the insurance because it would be considered pre-existing. Great question. Thank you for asking that. 
Um, someone said clarification on submission of claims post September 1. Is it correct that we just show our more care card to hospital for billings, assuming there is no out of pocket expenses? I would love to say yes, 100% that will be the case, but unfortunately it's not. If you look at our direct billing partners, yes, you can show your more care card and you will not have to pay out of pocket as long as it is covered as per the terms of the plan. But if you go to any doctor's office, unfortunately, sometimes they do require you to pay out of pocket and then submit for reimbursement. Um, so it does depend on where you're going. Same for any health and dental coverage. So dental, direct billing will work. Drug, direct billing will work. Any other paramedical practitioners, typically you have to pay out of pocket and then submit for reimbursement afterwards. So if you do require direct billing, if you are not able to pay out of pocket for doctor's visits, please give us a call. The phone number is right on the website or you can, you can talk by a chat and we'll be able to set something up for you, no problem. Um, so for those of you who, do, who did come in late, I noticed someone came in a half hour late. This is being recorded. So please, if you do have questions, please do access the recording. Um, because you know there are 200 people on this on this chat, and I want to make sure we get through all the questions. Um, so if you did just get in and you're just asking, you know, some general coverage questions that were already covered, please just access the recording later, and I promise it'll all be there. Um, but uh, someone asked for a pattern for writing assessment. I'm not too sure what that means. I'm assuming it means a prescription, um, but you'll be able to get a prescription from a doctor here in Ontario when you arrive. Um, someone said, when will the insurance program be started? I think I've said that at least 10 times, but that's September 1st, 2023, okay? So if you're a September start student, your insurance coverage starts September 1st, 2023 and goes until August 31st, 2023. For family coverage, I'll, I also will mention that their coverage will mirror yours. So if you opt them in in September, their coverage will also have started September 1st, 2023 and go until August 31st, 2024, sorry. Um, yeah. So someone is asking about early arrival coverage. So again, early arrival coverage is available to you so that you can access your OHIP alternative primary insurance coverage 30 days prior to your coverage start date so that you have some time to settle in. You will have to pay out of pocket for these type of hospital or doctor visits, and then you'll be able to submit once your coverage starts in September. So early arrival is very simple. You have coverage 30 days early um, in, in uh, the OHIP alternative portion of the plan. Someone asked, do we need to add anything extra for adding the spouse in the benefit? Yes, there is an additional payment that is required and you will simply put that through when you opt in your dependents in um, September. Um, so someone is asking about uh, personal um, drug prescriptions. As I said, any pers personal questions, please reach out to the contact center, but I will simply remind you um, that uh, your medication, you will just need to get an Ontario prescription. So you'll simply have to show whatever medication you're using in your home country. You'll just have to show that to the um, pharmacy here in Ontario and they'll be able to give you a Canadian equivalent. Um, I will share, someone asked me to share my email address. Unfortunately, I do not share my personal email address um, with students. Um, that is what our contact center is for, but I will share that email address when we are done with the questions, just so it's not lost in translation. Um, someone said, are there any doctors available on campus? Yes, I do believe there is a wellness center on campus. And I also do believe that is close to where our um, benefit, plan, benefit plan office will be, which is all great, all in one place. Um, so there are doctors on campus. Unfortunately, um, I cannot provide you information on where that is. Um, but I imagine if you seek information from the international office or probably anywhere on campus, they'll be able to let you know where to find it. Um, someone said, will family be insured under benefits of OHIP? Um, so simply just a reminder, OHIP is for um, is the provincial coverage. OHIP alternative is available to more care students. And absolutely, if you opt in your family, they would have access to all of the coverage, which includes the OHIP alternative. Someone said, when can we claim our more care physical card? So simply a reminder, we do not send any physical cards. You would get that from the website all online and you can print that off as well as download it to your phone. Um, someone asked at 9.56 to give an overview about more care. So this started at 9.30. Um, so we, we do have this um, whole session that it was uh, recorded. So 
I am just going to say this for one final time. The session is being recorded. If you did come in late, thank you for joining now. Um, but uh, you will have to go back to the recording for a more full overview. Otherwise, we will be here for another half hour, 45 minutes. So just seek the recording afterwards and you'll be able to see all of the information that you need. Um, someone said, will we get an email about this and when can we read about this more care? Um, I'm not sure if the, the recording is emailed. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm just gonna mute, okay. Um, so, but uh, the more care, all the information is found online. And I will put that at the bottom of this chat once we get through all the questions. Um, someone asked if, if it's ever possible to have to pay out of pocket at the hospital, and it is possible depending on the coverage. Um, please keep yourselves on mute, everyone, if you wouldn't mind, okay? Thank you. Um, so if you do go to the hospital and there are extra charges, um, you know, of course, that would be because it's not covered under the terms of the plan. It's uncommon, um, but again, you know, if it's pre-existing condition, something along those lines, that would be the only real reason. Um, all right, so we went through early arrival, we talked about the card. Um, perfect, thank you uh, for just, yeah, any specific answers all on the website. Um, someone said, is there coverage for critical or major illness? That's all covered under the OHIP alternative portion of the plan. Um, lots of people came in late. Uh, so again, we will be, we have, this is all recorded. So I will not be going through all of the health insurance information again. Um, but you will be able to access this recording. Someone said, will health insurance be available both on campus and off campus? Absolutely, it's available throughout the entire province. So it's not it's not even just London based. You can you can go anywhere within Ontario to the hospital or the doctor and have coverage. Um, so we did already talk about family opt-in, um, but one of the questions that I guess hasn't been asked yet was, uh, are all family members insured? Great question, yes. You just pay one fee and that's for all of your family members. Um, you will be able to find out that fee in September. And uh, again, all coverage is included. Okay, so there are some repeat questions that I am just gonna go over just uh, or not, not respond to you at this point because I have already responded to them. Um, so if your question is not answered, it's because it already has been and it will be in the recording. Or if you're still seeking more you know, details, you can always go onto the More Care website or reach out to a contact center rep um, you know, this afternoon or this morning. Someone said, how will pregnancy journey be covered under More Care? So if you are pregnant coming to Fanshawe, it would not be covered because that would not be under the terms of the plan. You have to um, conceive on or after your start date, which is September 1st, okay? So if you were already pregnant and expecting coverage coming to Fanshawe, unfortunately, you would not have pregnancy coverage under the Fanshawe More Care Plan. But if you do conceive, you know, within the month of September, then yes, it would be covered. Or while you are a student, then absolutely it is covered up to $25,000, which is more than enough for a healthy birth here in Ontario. Um, someone says, is the life insurance coverage includes natural death? Um, no, it is not. Uh, so it is, it is, that is under the accident coverage benefit. Um, there's no life insurance um, for, for any other causes. Um, can my husband be covered under this plan if I enrolled him as a beneficiary on the website as a family? Um, so yeah, you, you can opt in your family uh, all on, on the website. Um, okay, we've been over all of that. Perfect. So. Um, someone was asking where the recording can be found and, and someone, thank you, answered that after three to four days, the recording will be available on the Fanshawe YouTube channel. So perfect. Great. <laughs> I learned something new today too. Um, okay. So we did talk about the early arrival coverage. If you are still con confused about the early arrival coverage, please reach out to our contact center and they'll be able to assist you. I've explained it quite a few times, but it is 30 days before your coverage start date that the OHIP alternative coverage is available to you. Um, so again, please speak to our contact center if you need any further clarification, um, but that, that that is what it is. Um, someone asked, when to the last day to enter on the country? I don't believe there's a last entry day required. I'm not sure what that question is referring to. Um, oh, do, do you know? 
Yeah, so there is a last date with our office, and that has I to be, have to be here before school starts. So you cannot arrive after September fourth. So you need to plan to be in Ontario, ready to go by that date. Otherwise, you would have to defer to a different term. Awesome, perfect. I also learned something new just there. That's great. So yeah, September fourth. Make sure that's just after the long weekend. So, <laughs> but you may as well come earlier. It's summer here. It's nice. You know, not saying that the winter is bad, but it's not great. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see. Is there any way we can check how much insurance we have used? Uh, you can always reach out to us and you can inquire. You can ask on your e-profile for your drug and dental claims. You will be able to see your claims on there. But unfortunately, with the OHIP alternative uh, coverage, it's that's not available. But that is for maximums of a million dollars. Um, so I think you're probably okay. Um, and if you're ever in the hospital for whatever reason, and you might be hitting a maximum, they will let you know, trust me, that will be considered a very large claim and you would absolutely be advised. So don't worry on that one. Um, someone asked about what documents should they bring to customs to prove that they have health insurance? I mean, I think, you know, oftentimes you can just bring that you are a Fanshawe student. This is, this is you know, the Fanshawe insurance policy. So, I, I mean, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, so it's just going to be your uh, tuition receipt because you'll oh. have the receipt showing and with your LOA, which shows that you're full-time, which means you have the coverage. Perfect. Awesome. Um, and again, the recording will be available on the Fanshawe YouTube page. Um, someone asked, are we covered 60 days prior to landing? No, you are covered 30 days prior to September 1st. So it actually has nothing to do with your landing day in that particular um, circumstance. That has to do with the start date of your coverage, which is September 1st. Um, any personal, personal questions? I do see a couple personal questions here. Please reach out to our contact center. They'll be able to advise on a more case-by-case -case basis, but any, uh, you know, personal medical issues. Um, we've all talked about how to apply for family opt-in, um, hospitals and clinics. You can go to anywhere in Ontario, but you can always take a look at our direct billing network on the website. Um, perfect. I see that a lot of these questions were asked like 10 minutes ago, so that's why I'm kind of going through it quick because I think a lot of them have been have been answered since. Um, so someone asked, where do you submit the claim forms? That's all on the claim form. You do not have to submit by mail. You can submit all online or e-profile. Um, it's very clear on the claim form, I promise. And if you do have any confusion, reach out to the contact center and they can help walk you through it. Um, again, sometimes you might have to pay to pocket and submit claims, which is why that would be required. Um, so there's some, you know, just general, I can't really speak to you about the difficulty of the healthcare system. I'm here more just to talk to you about your coverage um, but that's why I do recommend talking to the virtual doctors first, um, because sometimes it can be kind of hard getting into a family doctor these days. Um, all right. So most of these questions have been answered. Um, I do. Sorry, I'm just reading through. Um, and I just want to make sure everybody does understand that any test required for an immigration reason are not covered under this plan. I do see a, a, a question kind of was alluding to that. Um, so just so you know, if you if you require any medical tests for immigration purposes, that is not covered under this plan. Um, but anything else that is required for school, for example, would be. Um, someone asked, should we give COVID tests before landing into Canada? I don't believe so, but I always recommend checking the government websites because, you know, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Okay, so there's very personal questions that are now, um, you know, being asked, but again, just a reminder, this is for all Fanshawe students, whether you're in the London campus, Toronto campus, everywhere in Ontario, even if you choose to commute somewhere really far, it is, it is in Ontario, so you will be covered in the whole province. Um, and also just a reminder, your coverage does not start till September 1st, which means you cannot create any profiles, you cannot download any cards until then just so you know. Um, all right, I think that most will be covered. Someone asked if baby essentials are a part of covered like formula. Formula would not be covered. Um, that, that, that would not be covered under the plan. But if you had your if you had added your baby to the plan as your dependent and they needed prescriptions, 
that would be covered. Um, but you know, actual baby essentials are, are not covered. Um, okay, so I think we have answered all the questions. I think most of these questions now are quite personal um, of maintenance drugs and, and things along those lines. So please reach out to the contact center for that. Um, now the YouTube page has been put up, which is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we've gone over that you can create all of your stuff online. So how I'm going to end this is I'm going to put in the chat here for everybody, our website. So it's www. Oh man, morecare.ca. That is our website. You would just go to Fanshawe and that would be great. Um, that is where the more care card is. You can also type in more care onto the app store and you can download our app. Again, you will not be able to log into the app until after September starts because we will not have you in our system yet, but you will be able to download your card on there as well. Um, and again, I literally just said it as this, someone typed this in, you can't create your profile until September. Okay. Um, and finally, if you would like to email, all you gotta do is email help at morecare.ca. That is our um, email um, that is going to all of our customer service reps. So again, unfortunately, I know a couple of students asked for my personal email. I'm not able to share that with you, but we do have wonderful customer service reps that are available to help you. Um, so I'm gonna leave this off by saying, you will not be able to access any profile or card until September 1st. So do not worry if you are trying to do it right now, you will not be able to. And if you would like to watch this again or send it to one of your friends, please go on to the Fanshawe YouTube page and we can, you know, all be together again in that recording. Awesome. Well, I think that we have exhausted all the information we can. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying on. I really appreciate that. You know, a lot of times students drop off after, and I think we only lost like 27. So that's awesome. Kudos to you all. Thank you so much. So thank you, Kim. It's always so great. And it's so much info and everything is on the website. So there's yeah. nothing that you can't access afterwards by going to the morecare.ca website. Um, so I'm happy to let Kim go. And if there is more questions about other things like the RIT exam and stuff, I am happy to stick around and answer those. Awesome. Um, but thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Mom. So, hi, was there any other questions for me in the international office? No? Okay, so if there was no other questions. Oh, it looks like there is. Okay, go ahead. You want to add that in the chat? Now, I did see there was a couple of RIT questions as well. So the RIT exam should be done from home. You should be able to log, to log in and do that. If you've been requested to do the RIT challenge exam and you can't get it done, the worst case is that you're going to be placed into a RIT course. And that course is just going to help you with your English uh, writing skills. Okay, so it's not going to be any sort of a loss for you. It's actually often a gain for many students. I'm going to ask a question. Uh, yeah, if you just want to place it in the chat, that'd be great. I'm just going to get to those chat questions. Uh, your fan card for Toronto campus. So you would need to reach, reach out to that campus. I'm not sure what specifically they um, provide because it is uh, run quite a bit differently. Um, to receive your class schedule. So those will become available as of July 31st for some programs. Now, some programs may take another week or so, so longer. Um, but they will be av available. You just might need to be patient with that. So if you are getting the shuttle service, if you have requested that from Pearson Airport directly to London or an area campus, if you're coming to London, it's going to drop you off at the Robert Q Depot. So the, the address will be in your confirmation email as to where you're going. And if you wanted to add a home drop off, you do have the option to do that by contacting Robert Q to arrange that. But the um, initial shuttle will just be planned to drop you off the Robert Q D depot. Um, no, so there's nothing that, that you need to do prior to September 1st to be in the More Care program. You're naturally going to be, uh, be registered in it because you're a full-time student. Um, Hi, good, 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 good morning, ma'am. 
Hi, I'm just still working on the questions from the chat. If I can just get you to hang on for just another second here. Okay. Can I ask a question? I kept on asking um, with mom, I, I forgot the name about the coverage. Can we, I, I'm asking if I can have the, all of the copies of the coverage of the insurance because she's, I, I've been uh, catching up her um, uh, about the cycle, the, what do you call that? The benefits. Yeah. So I wanted to have all, all the copies of those so that I can review everything so can you, you send us email about that she kept on saying that uh, i can found the the coverage on the youtube that they're that you're going to post but i wanted to have a copy that i can read and review yes, can so i have you that need to uh access that from the more care website and and print it we don't print full booklets anymore because everybody just uses the website okay so there isn't okay. a full booklet, but if you use the More Care website, you can actually review it all there at your own pace. Because because I know this does go kind of fast. Um, but yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. I was I was worrying. Thank you. Yeah, no, of course. So you see, there's a question about the orientation session and that they're going to overlap a bit. Um. So, I mean, I think both are going to have information. Maybe take a look at what topics are on what day and prior prioritize for you what you specifically um feel is more important i guess um but it's going to be a personal decision as to which sessions you choose to attend uh, the writ assessment so if you have received the notice to do the writ assessment then you do need to do the assessment and if you don't do the assessment though you're just going to be placed in a writ class. The writ assessment is just to see if your English writing skills are um, well enough to get you opted out of it, which most Canadian students end up still taking the writ course. So um, yeah, so there's no physical more care card that you receive. You can print a copy, it's just gonna be paper then, from the website after September 1st. Um, but you, or even just screenshot that because that's all of that that you need to show. Yeah, after you write the writ challenge exam, you should receive should receive some sort of uh, communication, and it may just come in the form of a writ course being added to your timetable. Um, and and there's no extra charge for that or anything, so you may just have the extra opportunity to work on the English skills. Where can you get the series recording? So those are going to be on the YouTube page, which I added into the chat a few times. I can try to add it again. That is the YouTube. Oh, I sent that privately. I apologize <laughs> uh, to everybody because someone sent me a direct message at the same time. There is the link again to our YouTube page. So you will receive that. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the campus is open. So if you're arriving a bit early and you want to come and explore, please feel free to. You should be able to pick up your fan card early. You can come and chat with us in the International Center. Uh, so yeah, if you're here early, come and visit. And, and it's also helpful to get to know your the area you're going to live in, the bus routes and those sorts of things. Um, so yes, absolutely. Come on by if you arrive early. If you need a gen ed, you would have received notice about that and been asked to select a gen ed. Usually in your first semester, there's no gen eds. Um, yeah, so the shuttle service, unfortunately, is only available for those coming directly from Toronto to London after they arrive. If you have plans to stay somewhere for a week or so after, you wouldn't be able to get the shuttle because we wouldn't have a way to arrange that for you. Um, so if you're in the Z location, that is just down the street. It's still on Oxford Street. It's just a block away from what we call the Oxford campus. Um, so if you've registered for the shuttle and you don't want to use it, please send us an email to FanshawCares at FanshawC.ca because we've, if we don't cancel that shuttle, uh, then we will get charged for that. So if for any reason, if you're canceling, please let us know so we can... Uh, change that accordingly okay um kind of yeah so fan cards are ready um as long as you've uh, submitted them and been approved it'll all be sent uh the link for the shuttle request form so that is going to be your isf form 
So it's the international student form, which you have to do by the August 12th deadline. So make sure you are getting that completed. Uh, I can try to find the link. It's just really hard when there's so many questions coming in to do that search. But let me see if I can locate the ISF form link. Okay. Bear with me. I've got the link up and I will pop it into the chat here. I am not the most tech savvy person, so I'm learning to kind of navigate all this stuff on, on the go. There you go. So the link I've just added is for the international student form. So when you complete that, please select yes if you want to shuttle from Toronto to London, okay? Um, if you're coming to residence and you want to know about moving in early, you would need to contact tact them to find out if you can move in early. It will all depend on if rooms are ready to go. Um, yeah, so if you submitted your ISF without your flight details, please just send us a new ISF once that's confirmed. Because we will need that in order to make sure you're in the country in time and if there is any shuttles and stuff. Uh, the cost for drop for doing the home drop is going to depend on where you are because it's done by taxi. So I'm not sure about what that would look like. Um, but there would definitely be a cost and it would just depend on how far from the depot area it is. Um, so you would need to contact Robert Q to find out what those pricings look like. Okay. Okay, yeah, so if you received a confirmation for a shuttle and you requested no shuttle, then please reach out to Fanjaw Cares and we can get that corrected. Okay, thank you. Uh, visa related questions. So we are gonna have an SLC on with us one day next week who can likely answer some of those questions. Um, Yes, so there is extra charges if you're asking for a home drop and you would be responsible for arranging that with the Robert Q. Uh, yeah, so the shuttle service, unfortunately our shuttle doesn't run to the Simcoe campus, but what we offer is a way for you to uh, book your own travel using an approved provider and then you can apply for a transportation reimbursement credit. Okay, so we do... Um, help with the pay the payment of that, but unfortunately, the shuttle just doesn't go to Simcoe. Sorry, there's a lot of questions just coming in really fast. Yeah, so if you've made the travel arrangements for yourself and family and you have your receipt, you can send that into Fanshawe Cares. Now, no reimbursements will be processed until after the 10th day of classes. So usually it ends up being close to the end of the first month when people receive the uh, reimbursements, okay? Um, as I said yesterday, the forms, we are a little bit behind on them just because there's been so many. So I'm asking that people give us about a 14 uh, business day window just to make sure. But that being said, after the session yesterday, I did go through and we are now focusing on uh, submissions that are before July 4th. Because what happens is on our spreadsheet, we organize it by when you're arriving. So we, and because we've had so many forms coming in, that's pushing people to the bottom because you're not arriving till the end of August even though your form was in earlier. So we've gone and we're just looking at that a bit different to hopefully get that covered for you because I know that's a worry. The key thing is, is just give us time. We will get to it and everybody will get their confirmation. No, so if you filled it out twice, then what actually happens is it ends up, we have to cross-reference both of them and update uh, with the correct info. So it actually slows us down a bit. So if you're not changing the information that you submitted, please do not send in another form. If it's because you now want a home drop, that's something you have to arrange with Robert Q. Okay. Um, I've submitted an assessment. So I, I, I'm not sure what assessments might have been submitted. If you're talking about the RIT assessment, um, li likely you'll just receive the RIT on your course. So there's a question here about the SIN at the airport. So yes, so some students, depending on when you're landing, the time of day and how busy it is, may be able to get your SIN at the actual airport, um, but not everybody will, but that's okay. We will have some SIN clinics on campus as well. Uh, we do not cover the cost of a private shuttle if you decide to book some sort of private uh, transportation, unless you're traveling with family or going to the Simcoe campus, in which case you might be eligible for the uh, reimbursement. 
any questions like that, you really need to contact Fanshawe Cares at FanshaweC.ca so we can look into it for you. Uh, how do I update my address if I've already submitted the ISF form? Well, we are only going to drop you off at the Robert Q Depot. So if you're looking to update your address, then you need to contact Robert Q directly. And those instructions and how to do that were in the confirmation email. Uh, is to apply? Yeah, please uh, apply for your fan card now. It's going to make it a bit faster for you. So that's not something you're waiting for once you arrive. Um, so if you're if you arrive or you arrive late by a day or so, just contact Robert Q to make any changes. They should be able to hold your booking for a maximum of six days. So if you find something, something happens last minute with flights and stuff, or, or, or for some reason you get stuck in somewhere else, please reach out to Robert Q to change that. If we don't have a receipt for our shuttle service booking, what should we do to receive the reimbursement? So if you booked your shuttle yourself, then you should have received a receipt over email. If we booked it for you, then there's nothing to um, request a refund for because we covered the cost of the shuttle. Um, every course does not have a writ component. You would have been notified if it did. Uh, if you're, e e if you're sending us an email with your documents and stuff, they really need to be uploaded through the ISF process. Um, you likely won't receive any contact to say, yes, we've received your study permit because it should have been sent in or not study permit, your um, pre-approval uh, letters. Those things need to be uploaded with the ISF. Um, if I couldn't get to the shuttle before it departs, who, what should I do? Yeah, so if you are running late, your flight gets in late, just contact the Robert Q kiosk at the airport and they will all um, um, fix it so that you're on the next shuttle. So if you miss your shuttle because your flight was delayed, something happened, Robert Q holds that, that reservation for up to six days. So please just contact them to let them know your new arrival info so that they can move you on to the next open shuttle. Uh, to pick up your fan card, yes, so you will need to bring your government-issued ID from your home country. Uh, so the, doesn't the fan card, uh, because they're, the, so the Simco campus isn't located inside of London. It's actually about an hour from London, and the buses that run in London, which are the London Transit Commission, which is a third-party company, doesn't have service in Simco. I don't believe there is much of a transportation system like what's in London, so that's why since, that's why a Simco student, student, a uh, simple campus student wouldn't have the bus pass coverage um, and only London would, but it's not in with the fan card, it's in with your tuition for London and London area campuses. Um, yeah, so if you're applying for the fan, oh, thank you for whoever just added the fan card website in, thank you. It's really hard to keep track of that. I'm gonna go to a couple of the questions here. Uh, South Camp is pretty easy to get to. The downtown campus, it's all within the LTC's bus route. So it is pretty easy. So Samsung SMG, did you have another question? Okay, um, I think maybe, because I answered your question, so the hand might still be up. Claire, Claire Bell, did you have a question? So students who have their hand raised, does anybody still have a question? Uh, yes, ma'am, I have a question. So we have a document list that has been provided to us in that it has been specifically written that we must, uh, we should be arriving before three weeks only and uh, not prior to that, but I would be arriving on 7th of August. So there would be an issue. No, not at all. So uh, arriving on August 7th is going to be okay. So we we usually recommend nothing before a month prior to the first day of classes. And that's okay. just only because one, we don't offer the shuttle service and two, your healthcare coverage. So we don't want students arriving with no coverage. Um, so, but arriving after August 5th is gonna be no issue for you because you're gonna have your healthcare coverage. And if you're asking for a shuttle, we can give you the shuttle. So it's more just so that students aren't arriving too early and then left without the coverage and stuff. Okay. So arriving August 7th is perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay. So I won't be having any issue in the airport, right? You should not have an issue. We've had students that, that travel with family that have already arrived like a few months early. So okay. they probably had to provide extra proof, but they have been allowed to uh, arrive. So I would not expect you to have any issue. But once again, that's up to the individual customs officer. But we have not heard of students having issues coming a bit early. 
Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Ma'am, please, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, Um, you said because Simcoe campus is outside of London, mm -hmm. What other features does the fan card cover for um, students in Simple, Cam Simple Campus? Yeah, so I'm not sure the specific services per se that your fan card would work for Simcoe, but it should work for like your access to any labs, classrooms, the buildings. Um, and then I don't believe you'd have any sort of food services right on campus because it is a smaller uh, community. Um, but you should be able to put money on there if you needed to do any printing and that sort of stuff. So your fan card serves as your ID as well when, when you're on campus for anything. So it's going to help you to get any sort of service that you need at the Simco campus. Specific questions, you might want to send them an email directly to ask them exactly what um, services your card, like the, the card will get you access to. Okay, um, another question, please. Um, would there ever be a situation whereby um, classes will be held at the main campus? Like, for instance, if I'm to be at the Simco campus and then maybe I have a course or there's a program I want to run or whatever, and then I'll have to go to the main campus for that, will such scenario ever occur? No, no. So when you are registered at a specific campus, all of your classes will be there. So if you're London South, all of your classes are at London South. If you're Simcoe, all of your classes will be at Simcoe and same with Woodstock, St. Thomas, anywhere. So you, you, you will not be expected to attend classes in London, no. Okay, was, thank you very much. You're welcome. There were some questions about the shuttle. So if you choose to use the shuttle that we provide and we book for you, then it's covered. If you have friends pick you up, if you make alternate uh, arrangement with family, there is no coverage for that. Okay, we're only covering if you if, if your shuttle is booked through us, or if because you're traveling with family, you have to book a shuttle yourself, or if you're going to Simcoe where you have to book private transportation, because that's the only options. But if family picks you up or friends or anything like that, there's no uh, coverage for that. Okay. Um, Andres, did you have a question? Hi, yes. Hi. Uh, sorry. Um, you were just talking about uh like that the different campuses and, and classes uh my uh well the the course um I, i'm enrolled uh, which is audio post production uh it says uh, that the location is london but it doesn't specify which of the campuses it is uh so i have a bit of a doubt uh, with that if uh i'm going to be like uh, changing campus between uh, each class or uh, because it doesn't say anything in the page. So beside your program, does it have a code like LC? Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, well, it actually just says like audio post-production and the program code is APR1. But uh, in the location, all it says like London. And yeah, so then that should be the Oxford campus. The Oxford yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, I saw another question in the um, in the chat that I think it was very important because here here in Colombia, for example, uh, for classes, uh, we get to choose uh, different schedules of, of different classes. Uh, so I was going to ask uh, if uh, the schedule is already posted and we can change anything, or we get to choose our different timelines. How does that work? Yeah, so because the, the schedules are actually placed on by the academic divisions, you don't get to choose your schedule. So whatever schedule you are given is going to be what your term looks like, and it will change every semester. Unfortunately, making changes is really, really difficult. Um, it's hard to even switch sections just because the programs are also full. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. I wanted to say thank you all. Please join us back tomorrow. If there is more questions, I'm happy to take a look at those tomorrow and try and help. If it needs an immediate answer, please, I'm going to put the Fanshawe Cares email in the chat. Send us an email and we can either get your email directed to the right person or we can answer it ourselves. So it's Hi, ma'am. I, ma uh, I just want to know if we will be reimbursed if we travel by train to London South Campus. No, if you are traveling in any other way than the shuttle, you will not get reimbursed. There's no uh, reimbursement because we offer to provide the shuttle for you, okay? I have added the Fanshawe Cares email in there. 
So if you would like to send us any further questions, please send it there. And otherwise, I hope to see you all tomorrow. Thank you all for joining. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.